Hi, Algebra 1 students. Welcome to 11.5, Adding and Subtracting Radicals. Here's my math funny today. Okay, so we have your first definition. Like radicals are radicals that have the same radicand and the same index. So like radicals are similar to like terms. We can't add x's together if one is an x squared and one is just an x to the first power. We can't combine those terms because they are not alike, but we can combine like terms if they are alike. So we can combine like radicals if they have the same radicand, which is what's inside the house, and the same index, which is the superscript beside the radical. So I have a step chart for adding and subtracting radicals. First we want to simplify each radical. So if anything can come out of the, ra of the house, we want to take it out first. And we want to combine like radicals by adding or subtracting the rational factors. So the rational factors is what's outside the house. So if I have 2 square root 7 and plus 5 square root 7, I'm going to add the 5 and the 2 together to get 7 square root 7. That's how we combine like terms. So here's example one in your textbook, and as you can see, these are like radicals. They both are square root three. So now I'm just going to add their coefficients. Even though these radicals are not variables, they have a value. Remember, they're irrational. So the only way to keep an exact answer is just to add the coefficients. So here's how, what it would look like factored or reverse, distribu reverse distribution. And of course there's my final answer. Another example, first step says simplify the radical. So I have to see if something can come out of these radicals. It looks like square root 45. I have a perfect square 9 that I know that I can take out and same with the square root 18. So when I take that square root 9, which is 3, right, that means I have two 3's inside the house, one can come out. I'm left with 3 square root 5 plus 3 square root 2 minus square root 5. The only like radicals I have are square root 5. So my square root 2 has to stay there. So I have a positive 3 square root 5 and a negative 1 square root 5, which will give me the 2 square root 5 plus 3 square root 2. Now this is my final answer. I know it's not as pretty as you guys like regular decimals, but again, a way to check our answers is to put in the whole problem, so square root 45 plus square root 18 minus square root 5 and see what our calculator says that crazy decimal is, then put in our answer, and it better be exactly the same crazy decimal. Okay, so in general, here is a rule that we can follow. If the square root of one number plus the square root of a totally different number, they are not going to be equal to putting a plus between them under the radical sign. Of course, there's like a couple numbers where that works out real nice for us, but in general, this is not true, where those two cannot go in the same house with a plus sign. So please don't do that. It's um, bad math grammar, and it makes puppies cry, right? Okay, so we have a new index here of a cube root. We have negative eight cube root five plus nine cube root 40 minus two cube root 135. So the first step says to simplify our radical, which means we are looking for groups of three of the same number to come out. So that's not gonna happen for just five under our first term. Um, that's a prime number. 
But when I look at the cube root of 40, I have um, a perfect cube of 2 cubed. That equals 8. So I know that 8 can come out of there. And then if I look at 135, you'll see that a 27 can come out, which is also a perfect cube of 3 cubed. So if you prime factor this, you'll see you have 3, um, three twos times 5 for the cube root of 40, and you'll have 3 threes times 5 for the cube root of 135. So when I take those numbers out, when I take a 2 out of the cube root 40 and I multiply it times 9, that's where I got my 18 there. Nothing happened to the first term, just to be clear. Nothing happened to the first term. The second term, I took out a 2. So now 2 times 9 is 18. And in my third term, I took out a 3. And the 3 times 2 is going to be that 6 there. So now I have some like radicals. They're all cube root 5s. So I can just do my addition and subtraction to get the answer there. Okay, so example four. Again, I need to simplify them back to square roots now. Um, a perfect square, we're gonna see if something can come out of square root 50. Square root x is just gonna have to stay in that house, I already know that. And then I have square root eight and the square root of x cubed. That means one x is gonna stay in and one x can come out. Also, I have a perfect square four that can come out of that eight. I have a perfect square 25 that should be able to come out of that 50, which leaves me with this. So I have like radicals now. And when I combine my like terms, I'm sorry, when I multiply, I end up seeing that yes, I do have like radicals, but notice they're gonna cancel each other out. At 10x square root 2x minus 10x square root 2x is just zero. So all of that work, I know, just to get zero, but we didn't know unless we simplified. Okay, example five. Do you see, hopefully you're seeing a pattern. I need to always simplify my radical, then combine my like radicals, and then I'm done. The, there's literally, it seems like there's only two steps. That simplify step sometimes takes a couple lines of paper, but other than that, that's what you're working on. So I have square root 2x squared. That means 2 is going to have to stay in the radical, but x can come out. Square root 75x to the fourth. Looks like I can take two x's out, because I have 4 in there. And again, it looks like a 25. I'm going to have a square root 25, so 5 is going to be able to come out. Um, and I'll be left with a square root 3. Nothing can happen on the third term. The fourth term, I have square root 18. Square root 9 can come out of that. So this is what I'm left with when I simplify my radicals. I have two terms that have square root 3 on them, so those are like terms. The, the variables have to be the same too, so, and that is the case. I have x squared there, so I'm good with that. Then I have two um, terms that have square root 2, x square root 2 to be exact. So I can combine those as well. So hopefully you followed along there and this is my exact answer. Okay, so these are your three practice problems that you need to come to class completed. You also need to submit your answers to me. The easiest way to do that is to take a picture of your work and your answers are circled, take a picture and then email me at jkirk at libertychristianacademy.org and that way I can see um, you know, where you made your mistake, if you made one and if you got the right answer. Uh, we'll go over these in class first thing tomorrow before we do the ribbon cutting. Also, your homework grade for this lecture has three parts. One is the actual watch the video, which means you took notes. The second part is doing this practice and submitting it to me. The third part is to come up with a question that you have in class. You may have the same question as a classmate and that's okay, um, but you need to have some sort of question written down in your notes along with this practice. So I will see you in class tomorrow.